It seems that no matter where we travel in the world, we always seem to find eco-friendly and permaculture projects. But in South Africa, they were all over the place and seemed to be part of a growing movement of people wanting to take back control of their lives. We went to an inner city project in Johannesburg, which led us on a path of discovery as we visited a number of different projects around the country, using recycling and earth building techniques to house and feed. Happy Toes was one of those projects, and it was a great example of how to use permaculture ideas to build yourself a beautiful and sustainable nest. Why did you decide to do this, and, and when? Why? Well, I'd say from a very young age, I always wanted to live out of the cities in a place where I could grow stuff and walk around barefoot and feel like I'm living a life where I don't feel too tied into having to do something all the time. Mm. and a life where I could bring up children and, and make a lovely home for myself. So how long ago did you get the land and start? I bought the land about five years ago and then I moved here four years ago. And when I moved here there was nothing. It used to be farmed land. It's a square piece of property. It's about three and a half, four hectares. And uh, because it used to be ploughed, there was nothing on it, just grass and weeds and stuff. And uh, yeah, I've had to come from there. I've had to do the design at the beginning and then do all the earthworks and then start planting. I was in the caravan for about three of the four years. Now I'm living in a tent. Right. <laughs> so I moved up. The tent's upstairs, yeah. It's on top of a deck that I built. So I've upgraded into a tent. Nice. And what's next? <laughs> what's next? Yes. Cop building. Cop building. Yeah. Okay. Because I've always wanted to do, live this, this style of life. I, I never really knew what it was called until I found permaculture a number of years back. And then I realized that's exactly it. It encompasses all of what I, what I want to do. But during the time I was learning how to work with bees and plant stuff. So are you completely off-grid now? We're 100% off-grid, yeah. 100% yes. off-grid? Yes. So you produce your own electricity via solar, I guess? Via solar power. And yes. your water Water we pump out of a dam using solar power as well. We've got a canal that comes down off the Khrutmariko River mm. and it comes down through a bunch of farms and we're right at the end of that canal system. Right. So that's how the water comes in into our property. So you, you can drink the water from the canal? You we can to... drink the water from the canal, oh, really? yes. I've drank the water the whole, the whole time that I've stayed here in the last four years. Mm. Wow. Excellent stuff. Could you show us around? That'd be, uh... Definitely. Let's go have a look. Let's go have a look. <laughs> So the best place to start is at the end. Okay. <laughs> and this is pretty much the end. This is the compost yard. This is where things start their cycle again. So it's the beginning as well. This is all your food remains or? Um, it's small bits of trees and leaf mulch and manures and okay. that kind of stuff. We make different, different types of compost here. We've got this compost heap over here, which is a two year compost heap. And then we've got that heap that's underneath there, which is an 18 day compost heap. Oh, okay. So what happens is this is the highest point of our property. It runs all the way along over there. Our property goes from here downhill and then our canal system comes from the river down that way. And luckily it comes to the top of our property. Mm. So the water that comes down comes into the canal and we capture that water as well. And then what happens is we've got a dam over that side. That's our big dam. Oh, okay. We fill up that dam and from that dam we can send water anywhere on the property because right. it's pretty much at the highest point. And uh, another reason why we've put the compost at the top of the property is that when it rains, all the nutrients that get washed away gets caught straight into our vegetable gardens. Mm -hmm. And any water that gets washed out of our vegetable gardens goes into the food forest. Any water that gets washed out of that goes down into the, right. the bottom dam over there. Uh, how do you find the toilet? Did, does it smell much? No, the toilet doesn't smell at all. It works perfectly. At the beginning, we used to not urinate in the toilet. But now a lot of the people that come here, girls and stuff, they do. And uh, somehow it still doesn't stink. It's a good system. It works really well. People that come here actually really like it. This is a cob toilet. And uh, the soil in this toilet came out of our dam. We've used the dam as a quarry. And this soil's got a lot of clay in it. We don't have much sand. Okay. So we've had to buy a little bit of sand or we fetch some sand from the river. Yeah. And then we mix it with this and we, we put some store in. And that's how we do the cob. It's got its own solar panel, own lights. So it's a self-contained little unit. And so you're very much into recycling and... Yes, we recycle as much as possible. We collect bottles and tires and this roof was also from somebody did a project somewhere and they put up a roof and there was little bits left over 
these windows over here are from old ice cream fridges and shops these bottles which have got a light inside so they light inside and outside the toilet mm -hmm. they're just from a, a local restaurant up here that we go collect some bottles there the rocks are just from this mountain right over here about 30 meters away this piece of wood i found in the trees just up over here so yeah that's how it goes and then we pump out of the dam with solar and then it fills that tank which overflows into this tank and then it overflows again into these little tanks that go down like this this is a bit of an aquatic nursery we bring some plants you see these ones are ready to take out now mm. we bring some plants little bits put them in here let them grow a bit and then we take them out and put them in dams or canals or okay. where we want them right. from here the water goes out here into our vegetable garden okay and it just flows through the gardens right. these these tanks over here were all second hands hand-me-downs collections so this is where the compost yard is. This is where we make all our different soils. From there, we bring it down and this is where we do our potting. So this is where we collect the seedlings and put seeds in. And underneath here, there's actually some nice soil. This is a seedling soil for pots. So we collect the pots from here. This building that's, that's been built over here is called the seed. In the future, this is where we'll be storing all the grains and seeds. So we take the seed from here, five meters away, we pot them. The soil is 10 meters away over there, mm. and then from here it goes downhill again, goes this into the nursery. It's part of the design aspect, right? It's part you of the design kind of, of like keeping a... it all connected yeah, yeah. in a flow, making it as easy as possible. We don't need to lug um, heavy soils very far. And so here you're creating bricks, I think, right? Yeah, so these ones are some bottle bricks. What we did is we cut the bottles and stuck them together and made some bottle bricks. If we had used just a normal bottle, there'll always be an open end. Okay. So either water will go in there or, or mosquitoes or something. So this way, what happens is you get maximum light coming through as well. Oh, okay. So right. if you have a look at this wall over here. So here again, we've used some natural resources. We've used some, some rocks from close by. All the bottles come from the restaurant down the road. There's about 500 bottle bricks in there. And what happens is in the afternoon, the sun sets the side. So in the afternoon, the sun strike straight onto this wall and it lights up the whole kitchen mm. so we've used some natural lighting so this is the nursery area we've just planted out about 400 trees or so they were all in here so it's looking a little bit empty this is where the seedlings come in it's 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 a higher shaded area we bring them into here to just strengthen them up a bit a little bit more sun and then once they're ready to go out we send them out this is where we bring all the the small seedlings out into our zone one area all the vegetables and and root crops and all that kind of stuff. We have a donkey over here. This is one of the ways we've heated water before. It's actually a double donkey. What happens is we make a fire inside, it heats up the water, and then because hot water rises, it goes up and fills up that tank. The cold water comes down, fills up this tank, and then we've got hot water in both tanks. The reason why we've done that is so that we've got some hot water higher that, so we can have a shower. So how long would that take? It depends. If you're making a bath, it takes maybe <coughs> half an hour or so oh, okay if you're making a double one it can take an hour and a half two hours maybe right that's Something almost like the same that. as back home with the the boilers you know it's half an hour more or less you leave it for yes it's yes not much if pressing. you switch on a geezer yes mm. this is a solar cooker the solar cooker cooks every day if you have a look here you'll see that it's what 10 o'clock or something 11 o'clock and this is already cooked just from this morning really it's hot, this lid's getting hot. <laughs> and then during the day it cooks, the next day it's cooked again. Every day this thing cooks food, if it's, if it's not completely overcast. Yeah, right. All right, so you've got how many different types of plant? Don't know. Don't thousands, know. thousands of different types. Really? And we keep adding and some plants die, and, but there's thousands of plants. Huh. I wouldn't know how many. Is it just for, for food purposes or is it also... It's for all different purposes. Some of the plants are nitrogen fixers, so we, we don't really eat them, but they help the soil and they give food or fire mm. to the other plants that we do eat. Um, some are for shade, some are for cover, some are for holding a bank. Okay. So each plant has a use. Out of all the plants that are in the system, we most probably eat 50% of the plants. The rest of the plants are for other uses. Right. All over the property, they're like that. Mm. Okay, so how much food do you produce? I mean, what, At the moment, not that much because we've just had a baby and um, we haven't been working that much in the gardens. We've been doing a lot of building and stuff. Mm. But uh, usually we eat out of the gardens every day. So you do have to buy food as well? I'm getting we do right? buy food, yes. Mm. We do buy food. 
and we buy toilet paper and toothpaste, <laughs> those kinds of things. But yeah, like I said, we keep adding to the system and we keep creating new, new food lines mm. where we didn't have one before and then we can unplug from a food line. Once we've got tomatoes, we don't need to buy tomatoes anymore. Mm. And next year, once we've got more beans and we don't need to buy beans anymore. So, you so we just keep adding and adding as much as we can. So that's, that's the zone one over here. That's the intensive food growing area. And then in the back over here, we've got the, the animal systems. What are the reasons or, or benefits for keeping these animals? The chickens as eggs only? Um, we keep the feathers. We've got some bags of feathers. We'll use them in the future for something, for insulation or, or whatever. Mm. Um, we eat a lot of eggs from the chickens. And every now and then we, we eat some meat from the chickens as well. We use them as pest control, especially these ones. They normally walk around here. We get manure from them. And the pigs are more um, useful for that. And as the well, pigs right? we use for to tractor, to clear an area. Right. So we just put them in an area and we leave them there, we water it a bit and, and they clear the area and they get it ready for us to plant in. Yeah, so that's animal rotation area, which is linked to our zone one, which is linked to our zone three as well, which is a food forest. So we've just come from over here, which is our zone one area, which runs like that. That's where our intensive vegetable area is. This is the animal rotation area, area over here. And this links into our food forest over here. All the water comes down through our our zone one and through the animal pen. Um, at any time we can send the water through the animal pens over here from the dam and we can just flood and pick up all the, the manure and stuff and send it straight into the food forest. Really? Wow. So this is where they all sort of link, is over here. Was that, and that's all gravity? That's just, all gravity, yes. Really? Yes, and yeah. design. I like that. And then this is where the food forest starts. The food forest is in this section over here. This is the first swale over here. There's a set of five swales down in the food forest. And then in between them, there's little nitrogen fixers, trees and stuff coming up. There's also lucerne and a whole bunch of other plants. There's some uh, um, sweet potatoes. And uh, we've also thrown a lot of seed balls into the food forest. Um, yeah, so one day there's gonna be a forest over here. Amazing. And then after the food forest, when all the, wa the water runs out of the last swale, it runs into the bottom dam. Mm. And then, like I said earlier on, we collect those plants in the bottom dam and take them back up to the top, and that's the cycle. Because with permaculture, I'm getting the idea that there's a lot of design in the placement of everything. So yes. how, much, how long did the design or the designing take for you? And, and, and the design did didn't that take process? that long. Yes, I did that before we really came to the property. Um, once I knew where the sun was traveling and uh, where the winds were coming from and which way the land's facing and where the water flows, then it was, it was pretty easy to do the design after that. Right. Um, we had to take in quite a lot of, of things into consideration when we were doing the design. Uh, for instance, like monkeys, most places around you can't grow fruit trees because the monkeys get to the fruit trees. Okay. So what we did is, we've, because there was no trees here, we've designed our food forest in the middle of the property and then left a large space on the side with no trees. Mm. So hopefully the monkeys don't come down onto the ground right. and into the food forest. So far they haven't, they always stay on the edge. They've never been into the middle here that mm. we've seen. Depends on where you are in the world and what animals and what soil and all these kind of things, I guess. Or yes, every, every, every property, even the next door neighbor will design his property differently. Right. Depends what you want, depends your own personal preferences. And then it depends, like you say, the land and the climate and all that kind of stuff. Right. What about the future? Where do you, where is this going? Where do you see this heading? Um, we're actually building a training center. So this, this deck over here is actually the roof for the training center. This is the training center inside here with the kitchen over here. We're building all our buildings around the circle, around the food forest. So we'll have like a circular design and then we'll just live here right. and just keep running courses and keep planting and making it better and better. We house volunteers so there's always a lot of people in here making food and mm. um, hanging out and stuff. We've okay. got accommodation over here for the volunteers and there's another Wendy down at the back over there, little log cabin and there's one down over here and we've got two caravans over there. Right so you've got accommodation so. for people who want to come here and learn. Yes yeah. we accept volunteers from all over the world. Mm. Volunteers come through between one week and, and six months to a year. You're on work away also? We're on work away as well, yes. Right, right. So people come and they contribute five hours yes. work a day yes. and get food and board in yes. a Yes, that's exactly what happens. Good stuff. So go to the website over here, find our details, get hold of us, 
Come on, play. I'm not going to be able to put it there, by the way. Why not? Well, I probably could. <laughs> come on, <laughs> come on. I just want to make you look foolish now. <laughs> okay, <laughs> we're here. 